Hello, my dear. I welcome you back to the program. And thank God for this beautiful time again to share the infallible word with you. I have been dealing with demonic oppression and pastoral duties in the last episode. I was trying to let you as a pastor understand the duties, the role you need to play as a shepherd so that you can protect the sheep, the innocent sheep. That is what I was talking about in the last episode. Let me continue today to still look at the role of the pastor and demonic oppression. Say the role of the pastor and demonic operations. You, you have to understand that because the demons can come into the sheep and harm them. That is why you as a shepherd need to defend them. The Lord Jesus put you there in ministry not to amass wealth for yourself, not to be ignorant of this calling, but to defend the sheep. It is This calling is not about us. So I always share these things with men of God. If you are selfish, you will never be a good man of God. Just ask our Lord Jesus who came to live a selfless life, to lay down his life, to sacrifice for us. If you say you are called, you shouldn't be selfish. Every man of God who is a true shepherd should be a selfless person so that you can serve the sheep and thrust them in your care and protect them from demonic onslaughts. If the demons are stealing, if the demons are destroying them, and more importantly, if the demons are killing them, killing the sheep, something is terribly wrong. It means the door is weak. It means the door. The door is very weak. And it means the shepherd is asleep. So every good shepherd should not be weak at all. If you are weak, it means you are a very bad shepherd. So understand your role. As a pastor, you are not supposed to be a weak shepherd at all. At all. That is why the Lord Jesus called us and gave us power and said, cast out the demons from the people who believe me. That is the role. So today, Let's listen to a very important shepherd in the Bible of the, of the Church of Jesus Christ. Let's listen to what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. I'm talking about the great apostle. Apostle Paul, he did a very good work. If you take his work from the New Testament church, we get few. We got little. So listen to what he said. As a good shepherd who toiled on behalf of his master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what he said. When he was talking to the Corinthians, he said, so today I want us to understand something as I read this. He said, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of man's wisdom. He says, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Hallelujah. I like this scripture so much. But in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Why is uh, why was Apostle Paul 
speaking like this, I've let you understand that we have the demonic power and their representatives, human representatives. Then we also have the Holy Spirit and his human representatives. So I always say church is about power play. Church has to do with power. It is not about talking. As I told you the other time. If it is only about talking and preaching. I know people say I preach very well. And I share the word of God very well. If you preach well you know. But somebody can copy me and preach my preaching. Somebody can steal from me. So talking is not the point. But when you finish talking. You have to demonstrate the spirit. That the Holy Spirit. Has power over the evil spirit. Hallelujah. Let demons know. That almighty God. Has power over them. That is why Paul said. In demonstration of the spirit. Let the church see. That Holy Spirit is present in the church. Hallelujah. Then he said. And of power. And listen to what continued in verse 5. He said. That your faith. You as the sheep. You as the church member. Your faith. Should not be in the, in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. Hallelujah. That's why they come and they, uh, uh, they, they are preaching to sinners. Preaching to sinners. Seeming sinners. Then they say, I see God blessing you. I see God lifting you up. I see God pushing you forward. It's a lie. And I also reply, you man of God, I don't see God blessing them. I don't see God lifting them up. I don't see God pushing them forward because they don't live for him. They are sinners. How do you entice sinners by telling them God will bless them when you know, you know that they are sinners. If you were called by God and have compassion for them, you will tell them things that will bring them into the kingdom of God. You will, don't, you will not go and stand in front of the church to flatter them. And it is very sad that some church people want to hear such preachers. I always say, God did not call us to speak from human wisdom. Why Paul said, your faith should not rest in that. Is that in, in, in the uh, enticing words is that if a demon is attacking you, the words cannot pre prevent them. Words without power cannot stop demonic operations against the sheep. Words without power. It is very sad that some men of God say, you know me, I am of the word. You know, the school of the word. We just preach the word. We, we the word preachers. How do you tell me you are preaching from the word of God, but there's no power behind it? My Bible tells me that the word is God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word is God. So if you are talking to people about the word of God, power must follow. That is what my Lord Jesus did. He preached and afterwards he demonstrated the power of God. That was exactly what Apostle Paul was trying to let the church in Corinth understand. Not enticing words. Some people go to learn how to speak. Now, when you sit down to analyze what they said, it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Church and the ministry is not about words, as Apostle Paul said. Let the people see the demonstration of the Holy Spirit so that their faith will rest in the power. What does that mean? It means that, hey, I am safe in this church. The door is secure. The door, the door is secure. The door is strong. Nobody can break in. It's just like a child who is sleeping with his father or his parents at home. If the child knows that the doors of the house are iron, strong and secure, you will sleep in peace. 
That is exactly what Apostle Paul was cutting across. If the church people can see the demonstration of God's power in the church, he will rest and sleep in peace. Because he knows that should there be any attack, my pastor is awake. He will help me. That is the role of a pastor. You need to understand this one. The shepherd, so what I'm talking about today is that the shepherd should have power. That is what I mean today. The shepherd should have power. It is very dangerous. I want to warn you. You some young men who are looking for money and you think it's just a fashion. One of the most dangerous endeavors in ministry, in life, is to call yourself a pastor without power. Preaching the gospel without power. I'm afraid for you. The demons can harm you easily. They can knock you down. They can knock you down. That would be very funny. Have you seen that some pastors, they, they are not even ashamed to share these things. And I preached the other time. And after the preaching, I came home. The demons attacked me. Where is the pastor? Then you'll be saying this to the church people. I got attacked. I was attacked. And I've been very sick. You pastor, you are attacked. Then what should the church people do? If the shepherd is attacked, the sheep is in trouble. That's why the Lord said, if they strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. The sheep should not scatter because of him. The shepherd should have power. It is very dangerous. If you are looking for money and you don't have power, stand well. Wait until the day the demons have an encounter with you. You will see whether God called you to talk or he gave you power to withstand the attacks of the enemy in order to protect the sheep behind you. You are the one. You are the leader. You are the shepherd. You take care of the sheep. Eh? You let the church of God scatter. Demons are killing the church. Demons are stealing from the church. Demons are destroying the church. All because of weak pastors. Weak! I saw a picture of some pastors and their bellies look like six-month-old pregnancy. Pregnant women. Eh? If your pastor has power, first look at his stomach. Some of them have eaten so much that they look pregnant. How can this man pray for you? If you eat too much with this protruding stomach, do you call yourself a man of God? Eh? So, as a, as a shepherd, fast and pray. And don't go and stand before people with enticing words. That will be man's wisdom. And Paul was warning the church, don't put your faith in the fact, oh, my pastor can talk. My pastor can preach. My pastor can talk. I told you that I can preach. And everybody knows me when I share the word of God. But it is not about talking. It is what is in me. It is the Lord God who called me and his presence in me and my ability to defend the sheep, the innocent sheep that makes me a legitimate man of God. Think twice. Did he call you? Then why are you weak? If he called you, why are you weak? Why are you operating without power? Why? Go back and ask yourself. You see, it is very sad. Many of the young pastors or even of the pastors of today are only talking. They are preaching the gospel without power. The gospel without power. I feel sad why, why, about some churches who just established them and they say that the, the power of the apostles it's not in existence anymore. So those things were during the days of the apostles. Ridiculous. Is God still alive? Is he still alive? Does he still have power? Nonsense. Demons can operate and kill people. Are, are demons still stealing from people? Yes. Are they still destroying people? Yes. Are they still killing people? Yes. If the demonic power is still at work, how 
don't you tell me that the power of God has ceased. It doesn't work. It only worked in the days of the apostle. It's because you are lazy. You are lazy. And you cannot pray. That is why you have established a church like that. I warn church people never to be in a church that is only about talking. If you don't see the power of God at present, run away. I will address certain things, but let me tell you why church people are running to today's false prophets. They are running to those false prophets displaying demonic power because they don't see any power of God in their so-called churches. No member of Action Power can be at any prayer meeting because they will tell you what happens in our church is more than that. That's, that's what you, you need to understand. Your church member, today church members are running to program, from program to program, program to program, program. If, if your church has power, what am I going to do there? I always put it this way. If you are a father or a mother, and you can feed your children very well at home. Would they run to your neighbor for food? Would they? No. It is when there is no food at home. Or the food is not even sufficient. That is why a child will run to the neighbor. And look for extra food. Are you called by God? Feed the sheep well. Feed the sheep of God very well. You will be satisfied. <laughs> Any other preaching will seem that this is talking. Please, if you are talking about preaching, people can preach. But I'm talking about what happens after the preaching. What is sad is that most of the very good preachers... I, went, I was in a church one day. Sometimes I drive around and I visited the church. The pastor was talking about Holy Ghost baptism. This was a reformed church. One of the reformed churches. So I said, oh, I see. This pastor is preaching well. You see that he was saying you need to speak in tongues. You need to have the power of God because it's in the Bible. And I said, well, he's hitting the nail right on his head. But to my surprise, after he finished preaching, he said, unfortunately, I cannot pray for you to speak in tongues. That power I don't have. Hey, if you don't have that power, why did you tell me about it? Why are you preaching about it? It is very sad. I find it very sad. So I am just opening your mind about what is going on today. The heart of God is bleeding because of weak shepherds who are letting demons attack the church. It shouldn't be so at all. Let me show you another thing the Lord said in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I want to read Verse 15. Verse 15, the Lord said, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Listen to verse 16, verse 17. Let, let me jump to verse 17. He says, These signs will follow those who believe me. These signs. He says, In my name, they will cast out demons. These signs shall follow them. That in my name, they will cast out demons. So it means, if you cast out demons from people, it is a sign that Jesus sent you. And you are his follower. If you are not doing that, there is a big question mark in front of your calling. Be awake, church. And never be around a dead or a weak shepherd. If the door to the church, if the door to the sheepfold is weak and open, any wolf can enter, destroy and tear the sheep apart. May you be awake as a man of God. May you be awake as a shepherd and know how demons operate so that you can pray for more power and set people free. I love you. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want demons to destroy you. That is why the Lord Jesus sent me to you. Sit up. Follow me. Go to the website. Buy the book. I've shared deep things in them. It will help you.
And if you need deliverance, if you see the need for prayer, I said, come, follow me on the website. Give me and send me an email. I will pray for you free of charge for you to see that the power of God in the Bible is still around. God bless you. I will see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.